Hey there, fish tubes. So Jeremy Wright here, and I'm looking back again at this 37 gallon uh, natural Arkansas biotip tank that I've been running for a few weeks. And it's, uh, it's doing well, but you may notice that I was just glancing at the back glass because I noticed Hydra. Now, let me get a zoom back at those. Hydra are sort of the freshwater equivalent of like corals, medusa, jellyfish, and they're really interesting, but a lot of people think of them as a pest. I don't because they're actually really beneficial and I'm glad I've got some back at my house now for a couple of reasons. But let's talk about Hydra. First off, if you cut hydra or sever them, they will grow a new head and a new foot. So severing them sort of um, just makes two. So you can't kill them by cutting them. You can kill them lots of different ways. Uh, probably the easiest way is just by letting guppies eat them. And guppies, other live bears, will just walk up and eat the things right off the glass. And pretty soon you will have none. But a lot of people with fish, or especially people who raise shrimp, don't like them because baby shrimp can be eaten by hydra. And that's not fun, especially you know if you're doing it uh, because you're trying to grow shrimp. So why are these cool? Um, one of the, the neatest things about them, let's see if I can get more of a zoom on these. Yeah, so now we're at 7x zoom and they're about a foot and a half away. These are, believe it or not, some of the larger, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say these are some of the larger hydra that I've seen. Now they, they're filter feeders, so notice that there's a little bit of stuff drifting by them. And well, first off, let's say that there are things in this aquarium, like, you know, Put my finger up at the front glass here. Do do do, right there. Uh oh, that's a little Daphnia. But we're looking at the back glass. Actually, there are probably some that have been back there. But yesterday, I introduced Daphne and probably seed shrimp into this tank. And so the little the little small animals that swim by are what these filter feeders capture sting and uh, eat. So maybe we'll even get to watch one do its thing. Maybe we won't, but see how there's like, there's not just one, there's like a lot of these. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So there's a lot of them, right? On the, on the back glass here. And that's because clearly they're multiplying, they're eating, they're they're doing something, right? They're not, it's not just one of them. There are some up, there are a few on the front, but usually in a tank, if I notice them, like you'll see them all like kind of in, in one area at first. So, so right now they're up in this top back corner of this tank and they're reproducing. So they reproduce by kind of like budding and let's see if we can find one that's in that phase right now. I don't actually let's see. This may be one sort of, uh, yeah, see the one that looks kind of like a, it's got a, a Y shape, almost center screen. Actually, there are two of them. Those may be some that are, are budding asexually about to break off. Yeah, there are two of them right now. And they're going to, so there's a daughter to each of those. We call them daughters, like they're not really um, male, female in the sense that we think, but we call that um, like mother daughter reproduction. And yeah, in this case, uh, the little bit of dirty glass actually helps because we're able to focus on the glass pretty easily. So. Anyway, that's just a short thing I wanted to share. Uh, a lot of people who have aquariums think of things like this as a pest. I don't. So I, I mentioned I was gonna tell you uh, how you can use these. 
So zooming out says now. There's some on the front glass here as well. Uh -oh, can we get a can we get a view or are we just gonna get reflections? Mostly just reflections. And a finger, whatever. So that thing, right, as a as, as another. And let's look back. So temperature of this tank, um, like 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Um it's doing pretty well. Um this is tank J, I believe, so do some finger math and figure out how many letters come in the alphabet before the letter J in the English alphabet, and that will tell you how many aquariums I have right now, um, because this is the most recent I have set up. I've been back in the hobby here for about a year and a half, or no, sorry, nine months, and um, yeah, just totally misspoke there. I do that sometimes, sorry, I'm human. And this is uh, the first biotope tank I've, I've attempted, and I'm really pleased with it. This is just local wildlife stuff, with the exception of the um, Eponogeton that just shot up from the, the substrate, and I don't yet have a home to put that, so we're just letting it grow there because it's a nice tall tank, and it's actually quite suited to that area, aside from the fact that I'm attempting a biotope. But until I move it to the tank behind it, which is similarly tall, um, or give it away or sell it or something, uh, I'm just going to let it grow there. It's been there for a couple of weeks. It shot up and surprised me like a volunteer, and I'm happy for that. I'm seeing little stuff scoot around in this tank. That's awesome. So back onto the, the hydra, uh, blah, 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 the hydra issue. <clears throat> I told you I was going to uh, mention how they can be really beneficial. If you happen to keep Hydra in an aquarium, you can use them to control green water and cloudy water. And they will actually take a green water system and over a period of a couple of months, that they will, so green water is um, phytoplankton, little bitty photosynthetic organisms that float through the water. Phyto, like photo, light, plankton, small stuff that floats in the water, phytoplankton, little green things. Some of them look kind of like little diamond shaped things. Some of them have other shapes, but generally they're just watery critters that photosynthesize floating through the water. And if you get into a green water situation, first off, you'll, you'll know what you're dealing with now. Second off, you have learned now a natural tool that's proven uh, to be effective against them. How do I know? Because I've done this more than once, where either myself or someone I know will enter into a green water, a green tank situation. They're like, oh no, somehow my aquarium has been infected by biology from the outside world and now my water has turned green what do i do which bottle of poison death do i pour in the tank and i go no no don't do that whatever you do don't put poison in your aquarium that's always comma always comma always dot 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 a bad idea you don't poison your garden you don't poison your kids you don't poison your aquarium you think of a solution to that. Well, I just explained a solution to green water, and that is this. And these are hydra. So if you find a way or a place to keep some hydra laying around, and one thing you can do is like drop the water level down. So if I were to like reduce the water level below where the hydra are, and then take a razor blade and just literally scra scrape them off. The reason for that is they don't like float off in your water when you do that. You might cut their feet off, but that's okay. They're going to survive. Remember, if you cut hydra, you're going to end up with two, not one. The head and the foot will grow an entirely new hydra. So if you take a razor blade and scrape them off into a, another container and then simply put them in an outside bin, just outside, and these guys... I mean, they probably didn't come from my backyard. They probably came from the waterway a bit away from here, the creek that I collected the, the leaf litter from. But, or maybe they came from my dad's pond. I don't know. But all the same, 
They're not from far off. And you can use them for several things. And the, the way to get rid of Hydra is, is like super easy. Live bearers will eat them until they all gone. They'll just eat them all until they're all gone and you'll have no more Hydra to worry about. And so they're the solution to something and there's an easy solution to having them if you view them as a problem. And poison is not the answer to green water and poison is not the answer to Hydra growing on your glass. If you have them in a, uh, like in a shrimp tank, simply catch your shrimp and put some gut gups or a beta in there and let them eat the things. And after a while, they'll all be gone. Endler's live bearers, uh, mollies, sword tails, platies, stuff, um, gambusia, which are mosquito fish, like the, the North American equivalent of a guppy. Um, yeah. So that's what I had to say. Thanks for listening as I ramble about aquatic stuff. Um, if I do this for enough years, I'll eventually rattle out all the stuff I know about aquatic systems onto the internet and someone besides me will get to benefit from it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this sort of thing, give me a like, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the comments. Later, Aquapals.